Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we are going to work on our hash map implementation in Serenity OS. And there's a really nice API that I would like to have in our hash map uh, that our vector has already. And it's called remove all matching. And this API takes a predicate callback. Uh, that is evaluated for each element in the vector. And if the predicate callback returns true, uh, that element is removed from the vector. Otherwise, we skip over it. And this is a really expressive way to remove multiple elements from a, a vector in one go by essentially applying a filter to them, right? And um, there are many situations where I wish that HashMap could do this, but because we didn't have this API, uh, we've resorted to this kind of awkward pattern where uh, we create a vector um, often called to remove and uh, then we iterate some hash map and uh, things that we want to remove we append to that vector of things we want to remove and then we do a second pass over that vector where we then remove them one by one from the hash map so um, this whole thing here um, pretty awkward. And this fix me is precisely about this, uh, where what I would really want to do is say something like this, uh, remove all matching. And uh, m values is a hash table. So um, I guess it can pass us the um, each value and we'll just say yes or no, right. So in this case, it will be like a cell. Uh, and then we check, uh, we have to check if it is not live. That's the condition for removal. So um, there we go. So this whole function would instead look like this. And the benefits here are many. <laughs> uh, first of all, it's obviously it's more expressive. It, it tells you immediately what's going on. We are removing all the the um, entries from something that match a certain predicate. Um, but there's a second really nice benefit as well, which is that this is allocation free. <laughs> Unlike this pattern, which um, has to allocate in order to append to the vector here. So um, the heap allocation done by vector goes away. Um, the double passes go away. It's just all in all would be a huge improvement to have this type of API. And uh, I know that there are a bunch of situations around the code base where we can make use of it. We just need to implement it. So um, this has been on my mind for a long time. I just um, decided to get around to it right now. So um, and, and I should say the reason that I decided to get around to it is because um, Brian was doing some cool stuff in the ext2fs implementation where uh, he got rid of one of those vectors, uh, one of those two remove vectors. So we formerly used this pattern in uh, ext2, but uh, in order to remove the possibility of allocation failure, which we would be unable to handle in that context, um, Brian did this thing where we uh, walk the hash map. Uh, it's, an, it's an inode cache hash map, and we're walking it sort of manually and deleting things as we go, uh, which is um, it sort of solves the same problem that I want to solve just in a less expressive, more verbose uh, way that would be just really tedious to replicate around the code base. So um, it's still like I'm happy that he got rid of the possibility of allocation failure here. But I think we should also go ahead and uh, come up with an even nicer pattern. So that's what we're doing today. Anyways, let's assume that we just get this right. And then let's implement the thing. So this was a hash table, right? Um, so I guess we're going to do both hash table and hash map, actually. <laughs> so we have remove. And now we need to add um, let's see, let's let's copy the same um, signature style of, of the vector API here. So, so that they look similar. And actually, there's another one called remove right below here. So I'm just going to make sure that these are somewhat nicely ordered. Okay. 
So how do we implement this? We need to uh, walk, I guess, it is begin. As long as it is not end, we'll continue. Um, and then we will handle the increment operation separately. So uh, if predicate for it, then we want to remove it. So it is remove it. Uh, otherwise, plus plus it, right? Wait, is it really that simple? Um, oh, this is going to cause big rebuilds. So let's just build kernel. Mm. In fact, we can even um, let's see, do we have like a test for hash table? Test hash table. Oh, for sure we have. Yeah, of course. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and add a new test case. Mm. And we'll just make a little hash table of ints, let's say. And let's just add some I'll just add a couple of ints here. One, two, three, four, nothing fancy. And then maybe we will. Um, first, let's verify that we have four. And then let's go ahead and uh, remove all matching. Um, hmm. And how about we remove everything above two? So then after that point, we can check that um, we only have two left. And then why don't we do also, um, I was thinking we could do one where we just return true from the predicate, remove everything that's remaining. And then expect int is empty. Yeah, that would be cool. Cool little appy. Oh, shoot, wait, I didn't even use it in the kernel. So let's just do this instead. Mm -hmm. Okay, that didn't work because remove returns a void. Great. So I was expecting remove to return um, the next iterator, I guess. So Clearly, it doesn't do that. But it's not like that would be particularly difficult to do. We can just um, make a next iterator. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum, iterator. And then we plus plus it. And then at the end, we return it. Huh. Oh, shoot, actually, I need to build. If I want to run the test on Linux, I need to build the logum version of the test. Hmm, test. Oh, shoot, I think I didn't actually tell CMake to build this. Okay, so test hash table logum. Mm -hmm. So it appears that it has worked. That's awesome. Okay, so let's actually make sure that <laughs> that I didn't like budge the test or um screw it up somehow does that fail yes it does fail expect ins empty failed cool so there's already our new api for hash table mm -hmm. uh, 
on hash table, um, remove all matching predicate. This, um, this removes all matching entries from a table um, in a single pass. Well, that is just real nice. So let's see. Let's see if that actually works in libjs. I feel like it's going to just work. So let's see if we have more of these to remove vectors. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we have a bunch of them. Fewer than I imagined, but still a couple. So here is one in libjs possibly. Although this actually is a bit more no, no, this is more uh, complicated than a simple hash table removal. It's a um, block merging optimization pass for the, um, or not an optimization pass, just a block merging pass for the bytecode engine. I need to get back to working on the bytecode engine at some point. Uh, let's see, tits to remove. Okay, so that's a hash map. All right, at least here we have one. Is this also a hash map? Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, fine. Seems like I'm gonna have to do hash map as well then. But let's run the JavaScript test with the first one. Cool, everything passes. So libjs use hash table remove all matching in weak set. Cool. All right, so let's implement the same concept for hash table or uh, for hash map, which will be a little bit different. because a hash map has both um, key and value, right? So I'm thinking we'll pass both key and value to the predicate so that you you can filter however you like, right? I guess uh, another option would be passing it the iterator to the predicate, but I like the idea of passing both the key and the value. That's something kind of cool about that. So something like that. And then I bet you we have to fix remove as well. Mm-hmm. Sure, no problem. Let's see, will this will this work though? <laughs> and then let's see how we would make use of that here to improve this. So in our case, we're only interested in the key. So M values, remove all matching. And we don't need to capture, actually. That capture was totally unnecessary. So I don't know why I did that. Let's go ahead and and not capture anything there. Yeah, all right. And then, yeah, of course, we have to fix this code. So now instead of just getting a cell to look at, we get, we're going to get um, cell star and a value. Right. So this is our key. And then we have a value, which I guess we don't care about. So now we just have to return key state is not cell state live. Boom. Hmm. 
Oh, and we can um, we can totally make a test for this one as well. So let's do kind of similar to what we did for um, for hash table. We'll just make a um, wait. There's basic remove and map remove. All right. Well, whatever. Um, yeah, we can just call it that. Um, so now we need a hash map, which let's do something like this, maybe. Call it map. One, two, three, and four. All right, so we can apply kind of the same concept here, where um, this would be the key, and then we get a string const amp value. And then we see if we wanted to delete the first two entries, then we could do something like either if key is one or value is two. And let's check that we have both three, both three and four in the map. <laughs> um, yeah, that'll do it. And then check that. They can also remove everything, right? Test hash map. Cool. That appears to have worked as well. Okay, so. Mm, very, very nice. Okay, so that's our new hash map API. Remove all matching predicate. Uh, what the heck did I say here? Yeah, that's that's straight up nice. Okay, so I feel like I'm gonna have to go and hunt down more of these uh, later because um, maybe they're not called to remove in every situation. Um, but we'll, we'll find them. But here is um, definitely an example of something that we can convert. Although if you look here, we can tell that this guy, if if there was something to remove, it wants to perform a notification or like it wants to broadcast a notification that the selection has changed. So that actually tells us that it would be sweet if the APIs that we just added, if they just returned a Boolean telling us that something was removed, right? So we can easily add that. Um, removed something, something was removed. Yeah, so we can say something was removed. That I feel like that becomes that's that's not a bad addition. So let's just let's just have that. Okay, and let's update our tests to also cover that situation. So. Um, this thing should return true, I guess. Let's, let's be uh, extra expressive about that. Uh, 
And then we can also try doing this again, verify that it returns false. Yeah. Okay. And you know what, let's also do it with a predicate that doesn't match anything. So to verify that it will uh, fail in those situations, or fail to remove anything. Okay. I feel kind of good about that one, so let's first do a libjs command. So use hash map, remove all matching in weak map. Sure, nice and tidy. Okay, test still passing. Fantastic. Make hash uh, map table, remove all matching, turn pool. Um, return removal success, let's say. Um, these functions now return true. Return whether something was removed from whether one or more entries were removed. Yeah, does the vector API do that? I guess it doesn't. Maybe we didn't need that, but here we're gonna need that, so Oh, and the vector also ha also has remove first matching, which does return true if it ends up removing something. So this one, there's sort of a prior art here. So this one is the odd one out at this point. So I'm just going to update this one for consistency. Just to be consistent. All right. Test vector, remove all. Oh, we don't even have a test for this in vector. What an opportunity to add a test. Vector remove. Sure, we can just, just copy the start here. Actually, in fact, we can even use the basically the same test we did for hash table. I feel like this should kind of just translate to vector. It's just that the underlying data structure is different, but and like it's append instead of set. But outside of that, it's, the test should be workable. Huh. Yeah, that's really, really sweet. So make vector remove all matching return removal success. Um, this matches the behavior of other remove hmm, matching APIs. Well, actually, let's just say functions. All right. 
So now we can make use of it in model selection, which is why we wanted to know if something was removed, right? So this is going to be M indices remove all matching. And then we actually have a filter function coming in here. So this is already called remove matching, which is kind of interesting. Mm. Makes you wonder if we should also rename it to remove all matching. Uh, just for um, consistency's sake. But anyway, what were the types here? It was a, a hash table of model index. Right. So let's just do that. And then here, return filter of index. And then if that returns true, then we want to do a notification, right? Look at that. The sheer simplification of it all. So this is going to be a hefty rebuild since we've touched vector, hash table, and hash map. Essentially, 99% of the system uses one or more of those headers. So um, that means we have to rebuild everything. But I guess we can craft a commit message while we do that. So let's see. libgui use hash table remove all matching in GUI model selection. Yes, and then this is used very sparingly, so should be painless to rename. And then we can also take the opportunity to update const placement here and here. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, what the heck happened here? All right, so that rebuild is going to take a moment, but we can just make a commit out of it. No big deal. The GUI rename, model selection, remove. Matching, remove all matching. Duk, duk. Ah, almost. <laughs> um, okay. This is, uh, let's be consistent with ACK template. Uh, how? Um, vector, hash table, and hash map names these yeah that's cool do we have other remove all matching like custom functions somewhere hmm i guess how would we know if we did if we would have something with a space before it remove append Yeah, this is um, a CSS algorithm to discard irrelevant boxes. That's definitely not simple. Oh, man, how am I going to find <laughs> find all the places? Oh, wait, I, I know I had the one in exe2. That was the whole thing that made me think about this. So this whole thing here is, I guess it's, it's a hefty block of code and really uh, we really just want to remove all matching from this cache, and the the predicate is um, this thing right here. So we want to basically this is a cache pruning that happens on inode flush or on on file system flush where we prune any cached inode 
that is not being watched and has no uh, nobody pointing to it other than the cache itself. So um, this would just become, I guess the fix me is not related to this, but um, mi node cache remove all matching. Um, let's see. So here we will get. This is a hash map, the inode index to ref putter to the inode. Okay, sure. So const I'm cached inode. So if the cached inode is null, because we we cache lookup failures. So if you ask the file system for inode number one, two, three, and there is no such uh, like that inode is not in use, then the file system will cache the fail lookup. Um, and just in case you have like multiple fail lookups, we don't have to go and hit the um, disk and look in the inode bitmap. Um, but I guess we, wait, we, un we uncache these ideas here. So Interesting. So we're just removing null pointer entries. Okay. So if cached inode is null putter, then we should be removing it. This might not be um, necessary anymore. That's something that we should maybe look into because I don't know why we would try to, why we would have a failed inode number lookup that I don't think that would happen during normal operations. So maybe it's not necessary to cache those because there's no, um, there's no API that allows user space to query like an arbitrary inode number. And internally in the kernel, all the inode queries should be valid numbers, I would think. But I don't know. I might be wrong about this. I, I would have to look closer at it. Anyway, let's just convert this into a simple predicate. So. Um, if the ref count is one and we don't have any watchers, that's when we want to remove it. So click, 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 click. Mm. Yeah, this is a fix me that um, I'm not even really sure if it makes sense. I mean, it, the, there is an issue that at the moment we will um, we will keep inodes around in a cache until they get flushed. So if if we have like if you have a file that the kernel you open it and then you do something with it and then you close it and then you open it again. Um, then we have it in cache. And I remember like removing things from the cache when they had no users immediately. And that was like a huge slowdown on basically everything. So we do want to have a cache, but I don't know if this policy that we currently have where, where we, whenever we flush all the pending rights for the file system, we also nuke um, cache things. So the fix me is about like, Oh, maybe we should always have the last 500 inodes that um, were recently used. Maybe those should be cached or something. I don't know what's a good policy. Um, maybe we, we should just cache them as many as we can, but make it somehow like a purgeable cache so that if the memory is needed for anything else, then we'll give it up. That's not what we're here to solve, though. We were just <laughs> converting this thing. So uh, we wanted to delete null, uh, null entries. Yeah. Mm, that's one of those guys. Yeah, the, the price of keeping an inode around is that we 
cat like an inode is pretty chunky, especially if it's a directory that has children, because for directory inodes, we keep track of um, all of it, the name to inode number mappings for all of the directory entries, stuff like that. And it ends up taking a bit of space. And yeah, we just need to, to look at this and investigate like what would be a good strategy. Anyway, let's not get distracted. So we came up and JavaScript tests appear to run inside the system. Fantastic. Um, our regular test suite also appears to run. But uh, let's let that one go in the background and see if we can. How much of a change was that? It's six insertions, 21 deletions. That's a nice delta. Use hash map, um, remove all matching in exe2fs. This um, makes the uh, this makes the um, inode cache eviction mechanism um, um, a, quite a bit more quite a bit easier to understand thanks to the new expressive api <laughs> yes i'm digging it all right it's very very cool okay so I don't know how I'm going to find all the other ones, but I guess I guess we'll just stop here for today and uh, be happy with this because I am happy with this new API. And uh, actually, there was one thing in the back of my mind in our the test case that we did for hash table. Uh, after we did, we removed everybody above two here then we never validated that the correct entries were in the set remaining. So let's just do that also. So everybody above two, which means that we should still have one and two in the set. Also, I don't know why the name is prefixed with table. Let's just not have that. Um. Okay, cool. Uh, improve uh, hash table, uh, remove all matching, test slightly. Uh, add some after um, removing some entries. Now also verify that the um, correct entries remain in the table. Yeah. Okie dokie. So that's going to be it for today's video. Um, if you made it this far, then I totally thank you for watching and hanging out. I hope that you saw something interesting here today. I like what we've done here. This is um, a nice little improvement, I think. And I'm just a little bit irritated that I can't immediately think of other places to use it, but we'll find them. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for hanging out, and I will see you all next time. Bye.